Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed. The subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, happy Wednesday. How's it going? Does everything look and sound okay? I saw there was an update. Hello, hello. <laughs> All right, so today and tomorrow, I'm making my new pattern, um, which actually does come with a how-to video, a nice little edited one with timestamps and everything. But I'm gonna make three variations, and I figure this might also be helpful for those who are like, can I sew that or not? So it's pretty simple to sew. Hi, Hannah, hi, Delwyn. Hello, Nina. Hello, Emily. Hello, Terry, Nicole, Aisha, Angela. Jeez, you're all saying hi, I love it. Nice to see you. Um, my name's Sarami, rhymes with Jeremy. And yeah, this is a live stream. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the chat. If you can't type in chat, you just need to log into YouTube or create an account and then you can. Um, if you're watching this recorded and you want it to be faster, follow those tips at the beginning. It does make it faster. I know a lot of people want a nice quick video. So cool, I'm glad you guys are looking forward to it. <laughs> So I have three variations. This is the little cocoon project bag. It actually holds quite a bit. I mean, um, it was designed for a yarn club. Um, so the yarn is most likely going to folks who knit or crochet for the most part. And I needed to be able to sew all of them myself since I don't have my factory anymore or any sewing help. Um, I had to make quite a bit of them. And I also wanted to turn into a sewing pattern that was easy to sew on a home sewing machine. So I didn't use any stiffener or binding. And I know that those are the things I'm kind of famous for with all the chicken boots things. Hi, Sydney. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Malin. Um, and uh, I, I feel like some people are like, eek, I don't want to sew one of her patterns because there's too much binding and stiffener, even though, you know, that's kind of what I do. So I, I really like things to stay open and upright. Um, and I like them very finished. Uh, this is kind of a departure for me. There are raw seams in here. You'll see like at the back here, that's a raw edge, but you don't really need to finish every seam, right? As long as you're securing it some way or it's, you know, there's lots of reasons why you don't have to. So this one I left raw so that it would be easier to sew on a home sewing machine. Um, there is this little facing edge here, which I know people would say that's binding. It's not binding, it's a facing and it's very easy to sew, but I'll sew one without. And in the how-to video, there is a variation on not sewing the facing. Um, let's see, the other thing is the, this inset and this edge, this is raw as well. 
but it's fine. So this is one of the few I have left for sale on my website. This is one of the ones with the printing error. And I'm gonna make some out of this same fabric base from Spoonflower. So this is the dogwood den denim. So I'm gonna set this aside. So the three variations I'm gonna to make today. How are you guys, by the way? Sorry, I just kind of leapt into it. My mind was already like in this and I was just cutting something out, so I'm kind of in the mood. Um, oh, I had a few things to show you guys though. So let's see, I forgot I have, I have my latest fabric uh, godmother subscription box and then I got the fabric for the Ryan's Raglan next week and I just wanted to show you guys because it's so scrumptious. It's a sweater knit. It's super soft and fuzzy. You can see it's pretty chunky. Not chunky, I don't wanna say chunky. Um, it's synthetic, but it said dry clean only and I was like, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that. So I did a swatch and I wanted to show you a little trick. Where's my piece of paper? So I was at home when I did this and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna cut a little chunk off. I hate doing that, but I wanted to sew or to wash and dry it and see what happened. Because I was like, dry clean only, it's synthetic, you know? It's not wool. So what I did was I ended up cutting these little chunks off and then I traced them on a piece of paper. I didn't have a tape measure handy. Um, and when you're measuring shrinkage, cutting such a small piece is really not the most accurate way to do it. I used to have to figure out shrinkages a lot for one of the places I worked because we did a lot of garment dyeing. In fact, most of what we did was garment dyeing, like 99.9%. .9%. So we would sew the clothes. It was a children's line called Bum Equipment. And we, would, we, sewed, we designed and manufactured everything on site. The only thing we didn't do was dye, and that's because we screen printed. And so we had um, this massive screen printing setup and a massive embroidery setup. So we did all the logoing in-house, but because of state laws in California, um, there you cannot dye and screen print on the same premises. So we couldn't dye our own stuff. So we sent that out. And we would have to do a shrink test on every roll of fabric, which was lots <laughs> um, that came in. And so what we would do was we would, you know, say we had this little t-shirt and it was coming in these six colors. We would cut up the fabric that was specified for that shirt and do a shrink test. And then we would build the shrinkage into the pattern. They would cut and sew the garment. The garment wouldn't look the right size because it had all the shrinkage built into it. And then when it was, when it was dyed, then the shrinkage would take it up. It was pretty magical. This would be really magical because it always worked. There was a, there was kind of a rare situation that you know didn't work. Oh really? I'm wearing that right now, Sydney. And I was just going to show you guys that I cut it off. Remember, this was the dress. I'm standing on my tippy toes. I didn't wear this dress all summer, and I was like, why didn't I wear this? I think it's just because it's white. So I cut it off and made it into a shirt. And this is the pleated one. <laughs> That's awesome. You're making it with weird knit with no stretch. That is weird. So anyway, if you want to test the shrinkage of fabric and you have a bit, what I recommend doing is um, cutting yourself kind of a generous piece with a border that you can have a 10 inch square. And then you draw your 10 inch square, you draw your grain line on there, pop it in just the way you want to wash and dry it. And I say 10 inches because you need kind of a bit to figure out accurate shrinkage. And 10 inches is easy way to find the, it's easy to do the math, like you can do it in your head pretty quickly. So I just did it this way because I don't have a lot of fabric. I only have one yard each, one for the sleeves and one for the body of this raglan shirt I'm making next week for my husband. And so I just traced off these pieces. I put a star here because that's how I knew to line up the corner because this one you can't see the star so I ended up cutting a little corner off the edge so I knew that that was the corner that goes there and you can see that little whoop de doo it's there so look at how much shrinkage I had I had quite a bit um, <clears throat> and I will also tell you the bigger the piece of fabric the less shrinkage you're gonna have the smaller the piece the more because there's less to stabilize it on all sides <laughs> you got some rival oh, that's cool that stuff washes really nice, Nicole. I've got several yards of that in a few garments. It's so off the green. Yeah. Don't get me started on that. Um, so this is about 10% shrinkage, which is quite a bit.
bit. That's why they say dry clean only. I'm gonna go for it. I ended up washing all the fabric in the washer and dryer because this is, my husband's not gonna put, take this to dry cleaners. I want him to wear this and so I figure like, what the heck? Wearing it is more important than um, making it precious and leaving it in the closet. So, hi Sarah. <laughs> Oh, Clementine. Which one's the Clementine, Malin? Who's that by? Knit tee with draped neckline like a cowl. Did you see the Love Notions turtleneck that just came out? Um, it has a few variations, but it has a cowl. And it does look really cute. I'm not big on turtlenecks, but it's the loose kind, like a cowl. So anyway, this is my fabric. That's my shrink test. If you ever want to know anything about shrinkage, just ask. It's a kind of a... Um, it's very straightforward and I can teach you how to do it on pattern pieces because adding shrinkage to pattern pieces is a little bit trickier because when you have like sleeves to armholes, you have two different shrinkage grain lines coming together, which is kind of interesting. Oh, did you try blocking it, Sydney? <laughs> Forget me not. I mean, knitting isn't straight. Like, you know, because you're going back and forth and it's a continuous line, right? It is one row canted. But I know what you're talking about. Some fabric is so bad. And I just got some of that recently. I think you saw, I think you were in the patron zoom when I was showing you guys. I couldn't even use it. I could use it for one garment, but I didn't have enough for the other one, so I straightened it. Oh, and then here's my fabric godmother box. So this is the box. I'm not going to continue on my subscription. Um, so last month I got the Anthea blouse and dress. This one I got the Philippa. Very cute too, but they're almost identical patterns. Here it is. So I got this pattern. This, uh, this is it's really cute. It, it's just like, I, I can't wear this style very much. And so this is the second pattern row. I mean, I swear it's almost identical. The Anthea just has gathers at the sleeve cap. And it looks like this is a covered placket. I'll show you the Anthea. I've got it right here. Now that this is alphabetized, so this is the Anthea. Oh, this has a collar too. Yeah. This dress does not look like that on me. <laughs> It doesn't, it's not full enough to do that. So, um, and the fabric, it, it's a really nice quality, but it's, it's astrological signs. And uh, -uh that is a big nope for me. <laughs> like, nah. -uh. And there's a lot of fabric. It's a good deal. I love the box. I got some, um, Kylie and the machine labels in there and some thread. Oh yeah. Here they are right here. I got these too. But, uh, no, it's not, I can't do it. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you guys about was that, remember how I was talking about snaps? Yeah, right, Sydney, that's about all you can do, but I hope it doesn't, you know, do something weird. What are you making with it again? Oh, the Cali. I think that'll be, that'll work. That won't do some sort of weird, like, torquing thing. <laughs> really, Malin? Oh my God, that was just so triggering for me. <laughs> I, but I, I've been there, <laughs> like I, I get those. Oh man. What was that? Oh, hello, Anne, welcome, welcome. All right, so the other thing I wanted to show you guys was, oh, and I didn't bring, I brought my shirt home. So, all right, so I've been trying to get into using snaps. Um, I don't know why, they're just kind of interesting to me. And they they do kind of eliminate the whole buttonhole quotient, which we all, you know, how we all feel about that. Uh, I mean, I, I don't mind putting buttonholes on and my machine does really great on certain things and certain things I'm like, what happened, you know? So I basically have a home sewing machine for buttonholes only. So I was using, I have like all kinds here. So I've used the spring snaps like on the Kelly Anorak or like um, the utility jacket for my husband, like those kind of, 
heavier duty ones. Those are easy to do. They're, you use a hammer and an anvil, meaning like a little thing to hold it. Um, that's all you pretty much need. These little cap snaps though, they're a lot fiddlier. So I've used the ones by Dritz, the pearl snaps. Where are those? Oh, I don't think I have any left. So I've done like the pearl snap by Dritz. Those went pretty good. Um, but then I got these from Minerva, which points to these folks for this little case that you can keep them in. Like, this is genius, by the way. Look at that, you can just slide it open and shut it. But I cannot get these to set on the garment. Like I've tried, I've tried, and I tried. I spent so much time on it. And so I went to the website again, and apparently I need a tool for this that's gonna make it a lot easier. I don't know why, because it's, they're almost identical to the Dritz. Super fiddly, I couldn't keep it lined up. I could not balance the um, receiving piece to the other side. I couldn't balance it on there. It would just fall off by the time I would get to hammering it. So I could not get it. So now that I know a tool will make this a lot easier and the tool is $4, like it's not uh, gonna break the bank, but I'm not going to order something from Minerva in the UK that's $4 and have it shipped here. So I'll just wait until I have an order with them. So I went to Waywack and I checked out their, their snap stuff and I got this thing and it worked like a charm. So the tool that goes to these hemline snaps um, is a similar type of thing. It does not look like this, but it is similar where you have a receptacle for a snap. These are, I taped these all shut. So you put the pokey bit down here and there's a little like dish that it sits in, which is great, it doesn't move. And then you put your fabric on there and then you put this piece over it and it holds that little um, pokey bit in your fabric in place. So it doesn't shift when you go to get this piece. Lay it down there, whack, whack, you're done. And it's perfect every time. I didn't have a single one mess up. And it, I felt so confident doing it. So <clears throat> the, I used the 16 line, which is, it's 7 sixteenths of an inch, um, which also is pretty foreign to anyone even using Imperial. <laughs> but um, I mean, that's like a little under, it's a little under a half inch, but they don't, they feel smaller than that. They're about, they're like, kind of like three eighths. Let's see, you can see one. I do like the way these look. They are a shiny cap. And then I got light blue, white, and I got this pink color that I ended up using. Uh, of course, they're not going to land. You can't really see it, but. Um, so a little limited on what you can use those with, you know, it's got a specific look. Whereas like the pearl and some of the ring snaps um, and there, there's some ring snap practice snaps in here. So you, there are ring snaps capable and there's different sizes. You get a different size, make sure you get, I think you have to get some pieces with your tool to make sure that it's gonna work with the right size. And you wanna make sure you're not trying to flub that because you're gonna be, if you're struggling with snaps, you don't really, want to keep struggling, right? So the whole point. So anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. This is working really great. I know some of you actually have like the big like um, press and everything. I'm not really willing to do that quite yet. <laughs> I have so much of everything that, you know. <laughs> All right. Right, Nicole? I totally agree with you. And I just went by the size. You do, Elena. Hi, Elena. How's it going? <laughs> I love that you're, you're coaching Sydney feel better about her slanty stuff. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's get to cutting because I know that's why you're here. That and to talk to each other. <laughs> All right. So this is my waxed cotton canvas. I've had this for a while. It's in this color that I, you may have seen me even share when they sold this because I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have this. This is so my color. I haven't used it for anything yet. I cut this piece off the roll so it wouldn't be hard to manage on my table here because it, you know, it is stiff. I just need enough for my 
pocket, which I don't think I actually have enough over there for my pocket. All right. So I have my pattern piece taped together here. And it's this short side that goes on the fold. I think that even I tried to put this on the fold a couple of times. I was like, what am I doing? I like, I think in our heads, you just can't imagine that's going to be the small side, right? Let's slide this all the way down just in case I can use that little bit down there. I could do a self handle for this. I'm not sure what I had slated. I was think I was going to ask you guys what you guys thought. All right. And then um, this stuff cuts really easily, especially with scissors. That's my little corner trick there. There's something about the wax that makes the canvas just want to be cut. It's kind of interesting. I don't feel like it'll be the same when I'm sewing it. So see, when I do these interior corners with the rotary knife, I go up to the corner there, and then I'm gonna lift up what I cut already, and then I can either go toward or away from this cut. And then that way I make sure I don't cut into this little corner here and um, I get it nice and precise. What was that little bump I just felt? I better not have a nick in this blade. Brand new blade. Sometimes you gotta treat yourself, which means every time you need to treat yourself when it when it's, comes to a blade, right? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, Leslie. I will actually. Um, this canvas here, this is gonna be really stiff and it's gonna be really nice to, for the cocoon. Like it's definitely gonna stand on its own. You can sculpt this stuff. So it's kind of the extreme. Um, I haven't sewn a lot of waxed canvas. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. So you might see me struggle with it. I don't know. I, I'm not too worried about it. I did sew one cocoon with wax cotton and I loved the way it looked. I entertained having fabric waxed by these folks for that project. And then I, um, I decided that I didn't really need it. Like the dogwood denim was stiff enough and that would have added like about $2.50 per bag because it was about $10 per yard just to wax it on top of the cost of the fabric, which was quite significant. So that's why I didn't go down that route. But I love the idea of doing that sometime. Um, and then, I think my little scissors, oh, here they are. I'm going to sew one to, tomorrow and cut one today that is made with quilting. Well, it's not quilting cotton, it's actually Essex linen, so kind of similar. And I'm going to stabilize it with Wonder Under, which is a double-sided fusible web. And I'm gonna do that for those folks that are like, I don't have any canvas, I can't find anything stiff enough. Um, this is a way to do whatever fabric you want and then you can make it stiff. And then I'm going to make one out of the dogwood denim. And the dogwood denim is 11.7 ounces, which is, I think, uh, 260 grams per square meter or GSM. So that kind of gives you an idea. So that will be kind of about as stiff as I've sewn just in regular fabric. What I also liked about the dogwood is I could get four per yard, which is great. Yeah, and then um, for the lining, you could do whatever you want, right? And in, in fact, on this one, I'm gonna try not lining it. I'm gonna face the edge with binding on the, the inset. Do I, did I say pocket at one point? I keep calling this piece the pocket. I'm so scared I'm gonna say that. There's no pocket on this bag. <laughs> I thought about making this a pocket, but it would make the bag tip, you know? So it doesn't seem really that smart. Um, I'm going to mark the, the, uh, how do I want to do that? I think I'm just going to put some pins in. I think I might need to get more pins too. All right. With the wax cotton, you could actually just draw your little X on there, your drill hole and uh, it would be there. <laughs> you, don't, you don't even need pins. It's kind of kind of nice that way. Like I can see my pinhole right there. 
In the video, I forget to do both sides of this, so don't forget to do both sides. There we go. I'm just gonna push that in. I'm gonna put my pins towards the where the webbing is gonna go. That way, if there's any blemish, it'll get... By the time this is done, this is gonna be so, like creases everywhere. It won't stay nice and clean like that. Oh, that's awesome, Delwyn. Yeah, I mean, we had a lot of interior corners when we cut stuff out, and you have to kind of figure it out if you use a rotary knife. Scissors are great, obviously. I'm not against scissors at all. And sometimes I would grab a pair. I think I did hit my blade on something. It's like the first thing I'm cutting. All right, so let's put this, yeah, right there. That's really annoying. I only have two more new blades. All right, so this has a notch on it as well. And honestly, if you're cutting this out of the main fabric and the lining, you're gonna want to notch the lining at the minimum. You don't actually have to notch the outer you're not gonna be able to see it. And that's for if you're sewing the facing on. So we'll, we'll sew one without a facing so that you can see what that's like as well. So I don't really like that I put a crease down the middle, but you can um, lightly iron things and it will kind of come back. Um, I could just really just wad this up and crease it up, kind of cover it up because that that's really what's gonna happen over time anyway. All right, so I think I'm going to skip lining the inset. And as far as the facing goes, I was thinking about just using some cotton. <clears throat> I could maybe just not do the, you know what, I want to use a serger on that though, just for folks who want to finish it. So there's a lot of, a lot of variations you can do. I'm just trying to cover all of them. Do we want a fabric handle? or a webbing handle. Kind of like the idea of the webbing on there. I'm gonna cut a little piece of this for a bias edge. So the wax cotton, if you cut a nice smooth edge, I didn't right there, I got a little bit of a, a little like blemish right there. But if you have a nice smooth edge, you really don't have to finish the edge, but I feel like our sewing grains really like to see things kind of finished. So we're going to add a little piece of binding there. So let's just cut a little piece here. I found this fabric in my stash. I loved this group. Oh yeah, my blade fully is, that's really annoying. I don't know what I hit. I just cut something off camera that was totally fine. Let's put one on here. Because I have a, but, a bit to cut, I'm not gonna struggle with that. <laughs> no sorry. All right, so I'm just gonna cut a little, actually I'm gonna bind it to one side. So we just need like an inch long strip. There we go, that'll be enough. And we'll just face this little edge right here. We haven't just, I haven't decided what handle do you think? Do I think you should do the webbing or should I do canvas? I could do this too. Surger, surger, surger. <laughs> webbing, webbing, all right, all right, all right, cool. Let's do the webbing. Um, how, much is the, how much is this piece? I think it's, there we go. All right, so we have one ready to go. I need a bin. I don't have a bin. All right, 
And then let's see, the next one I'm gonna cut is the one that I'm gonna use the Wonder Under. Have you guys heard of Wonder Under? It's kind of old school. I feel like it's one of the original, like when, when Pellon stuff started really kind of gaining popularity and momentum in the sewing world, this stuff was probably one of the things that put it on the on the map. I don't know. I'm just saying that. Maybe it's just because like what I saw. Hello, Beth Ann. Welcome. Yeah, it's great for applique. And so I feel like in the 90s, it got really popular to applique sweatshirts. Do you remember that? <laughs> um, and it wasn't a really great moment in home sewing history. I'm sorry. <laughs> It just wasn't and then they'd use like puff paint and tulip glitter paint and outline it and <sighs> we all survived that yeah so um fun to do I just and fun to wear I, it just wasn't my favorite look sorry sorry I'm sure I wore some of it I was a kid but still all right um so I'm going to a piece of this and so what wonder under is is this is a piece of paper and on this piece of paper there is this thin web you see it I call it web um, it's basically glue you need this piece of paper don't ever lose the piece of paper I think I can get a piece of the go across or what was it like this oh yeah yeah so I can barely get the cocoon on here this is okay that there's a little tear in it that's fine yeah, we're gonna be good here. Mine's really old, but I did test some. And so what it does is you can glue fabric together. Where's my little, I have a little sample. So I did a little sample on the Essex linen yesterday. And so it looks really nice from both sides if you fuse it correctly. Um, if you don't, if you have a fabric that's kind of fussy um, or maybe you don't fuse it quite right, it can look like cellulite. But this is a little bit more of a guarantee that it won't look like that. In fact, I would say Wonder Under doesn't have that risk. Unless maybe you were fusing it to two different fabrics and one of them wants to react that way. Um, it has to be natural fiber for the most part that you're going to fuse this to. <clears throat> There's directions here too. I could probably read those. But, um, or like what their specific parameters are and specifications that are required in order to use it. But... It's not going to give you, it's going to look really nice. Like it's just going to look like the fabric is the same on both sides and it feels much stiffer, you know, like it's much stiffer. Like this fabric is this fabric right here. And you can see how much thinner and floppier this is. So we're going to try it as a way to be able to use any fabric we want to make one of these. And you can do this with any project. Good morning, Allison. I'm kind of excited to be able to get rid of this bolt, though. Let's use this nice edge down here. All right, so. I've had this piece for a long time. So it's gonna be a little too narrow on either end, but that's okay, it's inside my seam allowance, so that'll be just fine. Same thing, see, I lift it up. This cuts so easy and I have a brand new knife that I did cut a little bit in there. It's okay, this isn't the fabric. No one's gonna see this little, I could be kind of wild with this. I don't even have to do my, my uh, trick. The one thing about this is that you don't want any of it to touch your ironing board or your iron. So that's why you need this paper that it comes with and also to make sure that it's not going to be bigger than the piece that you're fusing it to. All right. All right, so we have our Wonder Under. It's got a really dumb name, I feel like. <laughs> it's just my opinion. So I'm going to use this Essex linen here. 
You could fuse your fabric first and then cut out your uh, Wonder Under and your piece. Like you could, you could just fuse this whole piece and then cut it out as one, totally fine. Um, maybe it makes you feel a little more comfortable using it. It does, Sydney. Hi, Walter. Good afternoon. How's it going? I love Essex linen. I use it on a lot of stuff. Do I have enough for the pocket? I feel like I don't have enough for the pocket. Is that true? I, th I checked everything. Dang it. Hmm. I have this, but it's a different color. Hard to tell, but it is. And let me see if I don't have any in that color. A couple places I can check. Because that was my quilt on my bed. No. All right, well, I think we're gonna have a two-tone one. See, so this has a bit of a turquoise thread and this one has a light blue thread. They both are woven with black. It's very slight. Oh, did you, Walter? Oh, that's a bummer. Oh, I know what I could do. I will make the inside one color, the outside another color, and then I'll have enough for my pocket. <laughs> Not pocket, inset. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, you guys. Inset, inset. <laughs> There's no pocket on this. All right, I'm going to cut these two layers out at the same time. You could add a pocket, but I think a pocket might be a little overbearing for this small of a bag. Yeah, you can get iron cleaner, Mafio. Have you ever seen that stuff? It works really great. I highly recommend getting it. You can just get it at any old fabric store usually. Um, it smells really weird. You heat up your iron and you iron it on a press cloth and it really cleans your iron so nicely. So if you have residue, I highly recommend doing that. Especially if you use a steam iron and you want to keep your, your sole plate clean. Got four layers, four layers. I'm barely catching that under layer there. All right. Four layers, I'm gonna use my scissors here. So this is gonna be a little fussy in some ways because we're not using a specific pattern for the lining. So pr a proper way to draft a pattern that has a lining, especially if the lining is smashed up against the outer, it needs to be slightly smaller. That way it won't buckle on the inside. Since we're fusing it, it's really going to keep it tame, but we're still going to give ourselves the best chance for, you know, doing it. All right, so I'm going to mark my webbing placement after we fuse it. All right, so I kind of wanted, well, let's see, which one do I have enough for pockets? I mean, inset, inset, oh my gosh. I think I picked this. Let's do the blue. The blue, I'm gonna put it, make a handle out of this. I think maybe this one's better. <laughs> that works. <laughs> Your stubby nails. 
All right, so I'm gonna do the same treatment to my inset. Um, so I need to get a piece of fusible for that as well. It's easy to forget about this pattern piece for me and then also to call it the wrong thing. This is the reason a fat quarter of fabric is not enough to make the cocoon. You'll have a little bit of extra. I don't like patterns like that. Like I never designed patterns that way. Uh, we design things to not leave us in the lurch with fabric, like having too much fabric left over. Cause you just, you just don't, it piles up really quickly. So if this was like, uh, if say you're, you're making this and it is the only thing you're making out of a particular fabric in your line, um, and it always leaves you with this weird shaped piece that you can't use for any other parts of this pattern, you'd have to include all that fabric waste in the cost of the product. And that's just a lot, you know? Hi, Heidi, how's it going? Nice to see you. All right, so let's cut this piece. There's no grain line on this stuff, by the way. You can put it any which way it'll fit on whatever scraps you can find of this stuff. All right, and I'm gonna make a fabric handle on this one. I kind of like the idea of a really colorful handle that kind of pops. I didn't set my iron camera up, but we'll iron this at the very end. I'll show you how it goes together. All right, so I'm gonna use this as the handle and I want my handle to finish one inch or two inches wide. What do I want it to finish actually? Let me think about that. I think like one and a half inches will be enough. It's, it's still quite wide. So we're gonna cut this one and a half, three, we're gonna cut this six inches wide. I'm gonna get my chunky ruler. I like it. Plus I think this ruler is actually the length of my <laughs> handle, which is really nice. <laughs> I only need one layer, but I'm gonna fuse it. Not with the, it doesn't really need the wonder under. It's a little overkill. So because I want my handle to finish one and a half inches wide, you need to quadruple that width for your handle. I probably don't even need interfacing to be honest. Let's see how this feels when it's four layers. Yeah, let's add a little bit because we really want to make sure our handle stands up, right? Hi, Terry. Watching from the car. Nice to see you. Hi, Rebecca. How's it going? Work's been crazy. I feel like it right this time of year is such a big shift for everybody, you know, and it starts the gauntlet of things like, um, you know, school functions and Halloween and Thanksgiving and there's a lot of birthdays this time of year, <laughs> you know? Like it, there was in my in my kid's like life because she was a November birthday or she is a November birthday and so there would be all of her friends, you know, had birthdays around that same time because of like play groups and stuff. Oh, we could use the Trico. This will be great. So let's just cut a piece. And, you know, we'll, we'll do half. I think this is, why not, right? I think that'll be good. Okay. 
I would use a fusible interfacing or um, something to kind of make your handle stiff. You could even just do two, you know, like a second one of these. I'm trying to think, what would I do? Yeah, or you'd interline it with a piece of canvas. I think anything that you can hold as one layer because of the way I'm going to sew it, we're not going to sew and turn it right side out. You can do that if you want. It's a short enough piece, but I really like this way of sewing because it gives it some umph because we're going to sew it. We're going to do something like this and stitch down. You could even um, quilt it. I think that'll look really cute. And I got this out as maybe the facing along the inside edge, but we're going to, we're going to overlock that one. Although that one has the clear front. Hmm. I want this one to be clean finished though. I could do the floral too, but I like the idea of this pop of green. And it doesn't need to be on the bias. We just need a one inch wide piece, 17 inches long. All right, this is also Essex linen. I have a lot of it. It's kind of just nice for me to have on hand, to be honest. It's great for all kinds of things. Okay, so now we have our cut in like regular old lightweight fabric version that we're gonna use Wonder Under on. We've got our handle and we'll have to mark our webbing placement at the end. All right, so the last one I'm gonna cut out today. So none of these I'm sewing the way the pattern comes, but there is a how-to video for that. So in this one is the dogwood denim from Spoonflower, which I, like I said, is like 11.7 ounces <clears throat> or 260 grams per square meter. And I, I like it, it's, it's pretty much their heaviest fabric, I feel like. Maybe some of their other upholstery fabrics are a little heavier, but I wanted something that could be sewn in a domestic sewing machine or a home sewing machine um, without you know, making you wince you know, <laughs> while you do it. All right, so I think I'm gonna do this, the golden color. One tip, I will say if you are like, oh my gosh, Spoonflower fabrics are so expensive, and I get it, I really do. Um, this is my tip. I love their fill -a yard feature. So the fill -a yard feature lets me get lots of different prints on one cut of fabric, because here's the thing. You can get a fat quarter of fabric, but <clears throat> you're being charged for a half a yard. And so you can't buy a half a yard. So it's a fat quarter or a whole yard. There's no in between those two. So if you're willing to spend a little bit, you'd get a lot more for your dollar if you do one of the fill -a yard features. And so the fill -a yard there comes in like, I think six different options. Here is my tip. <laughs> um, I will you make a collection. So pick some designs from whoever you want your prints to be from. So go around Spoonflower it is not hard to find some prints that you love, right? Um, and then you create a collection. So create a collection, pick a bunch of prints, and then from that collection, or if you go to the fill -a yard feature, you can do it from the collection as well. You do the fill -a yard thing. And then what you do is find the one that has the fabric base that you want. So this right here is the, I think it's the, one of the, the two designs, what's it called? Two designs, vertical split, I think this is, no, this is horizontal split. So you can get, do one, so then you get a half a yard of fabric with two different prints. This is one, right? So I did my print in two different colors because I wanted a lot of these two, but I didn't want a ton. I didn't want like a, a yard of each. <clears throat> so then I'm only paying for a yard of fabric, but I get two half yards. You can't do this any other way. You can't get a half yard of fabric any other way. Um, you can do cheater quilts, but this is the thing with fill -a yard. Not every schematic or um, option comes in all fabric bases. So what you do is just, 
create a create a fill yard and then just look at all the fabric options and do a different one if you want it's really easy to bounce back and forth until you start creating the fill yard you won't lose any work or anything like that you're not like you don't have to like go through a bunch of pages on their site you just from their collection say create fill yard and then pick and there's vertical and horizontal split for this you could do scarves or something like that like infinity scarves um, there's like four i think um, and then there's cheater quilts so often i will get the two yard cheater quilt and you can make a cheater quilt like look at this right here here's one of those so this is the petal signature cotton and look i could do it in all different sizes so you like this is the smallest square you can fill in and so then i this is one yard. Yeah, this is the one yard. And this is the selvage. And so I wanted the most of these two colors and then a little less of these two. And then I just wanted a sample of these colors down here. Because I just wanted to know to make sure that the colors are what I asked for. <clears throat> so this is how I test it. But you can make cheater quilts this way. Like if you have a kiddo in your life who loves sloths and you're like, I can't find sloth fabric, just go to Spoonflower, do the cheater quilt, um, pick all the sloth designs you can find on Spoonflower. And then all you gotta do is put a backing on it and quilt through the squares. Quick. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna do this one here. And the other thing I like about things like dogwood denim is that it's very, very wide. So it may look expensive because I think it's like $27 a yard. But if you looked at the price per square inch for like the petal signature cotton versus the dogwood denim, they're about the same, I'm pretty sure. All right, so I'm gonna do a vinyl front inset. Is this piece big enough? I don't think it is, I'll get another piece. And then I'm gonna do a um, golden. But this is the other thing, like if you, you know, if you have disposable income, you know, you can get your outer bag in this. And if you want your inset to match, you can have it printed on, um, pedal, but the smallest piece you can get that would fit the inset is the fat quarter because the eight inch swatch doesn't fit. I have lots of tips on trying to get your money's worth on spoon flour. I've been doing that for a long time. All right, so now we have this one here. It's in the fold. If I were making this off camera, I always try and tell you like, what would I would do if you weren't watching me? I would absolutely make this pattern piece not on the fold, um, but it does make doing these squares a little easier. These little corner cutouts because you don't have to do four corners, you can just do two. <laughs> You'll notice on the cocoon as well, there's two different seam allowances happening. Oops, my page is coming out of tape there. I need to tape that. I think I used removable tape. Isn't that funny? I don't know why. I'm not going to remove it. can hear how thick it is, right? All right, so what do you think? Webbing? Webbing? Or self? These notches are for the top and the corner of the inset. There's only a quarter inch seam allowance along this top edge, so don't go crazy notching it. <laughs> Who would go crazy notching it? Me. I need some more pins. 
Now, every time I see these, they're like, because Nancy said they look like coffins. I only think that they look like a coffin. <laughs> So one thing I experimented with was how to transfer these markings because I was sewing so many. But so the traditional way would be to drill a hole. But the thing is, the hole shows on the inside of the bag. And so I decided that I can't do that. Like I wanted it to look more finished than that. So this is why I mark it. I want it from the right side. Mark it from the right side. Not the wrong side. That's another thing I tried. I was like, well, could I mark this from the wrong side? Because then that way, you know, it'd be a little easier, but it wasn't. Absolutely wasn't. These are gonna be fun to sew. I'm looking forward to sewing all these. I haven't made, I've only made one wax cotton one, and I haven't made the Wonder Under style before, so that'll be fun. All right, so we just need us where the pin goes in. I caught like one little thread there. There we go. Okay. I think the webbing would look nice. These little pins, I'm always scared. They're like, it's like a little pin that's a nail. Um, and they're, uh, I'm always afraid that I'll ro rotary knife over it while it's sitting on my table. So I always put it back right away. And if I can't find it, I will spend forever looking for it on my table. Quickest way to ruin. A knife. All right, so I need a piece of vinyl now. And this, so this one will have a clear front so you can see inside the cocoon. People love being able to see inside their project bags. Um, and I know that there's gonna be someone who sews the whole thing in vinyl probably. I don't think I have a big enough piece though so off the off the bolt. I usually keep some scraps. No. Look at this piece. Do you think that this is salvageable? <laughs> if I iron it, it would be. It would fit. I wonder if I can salvage that. All right, so this vinyl um, came with tissue paper. It was an experiment we did. And that's because when this is cut with a machine, sometimes the machine will melt the edges together. Not sometimes. The friction of the cutting machine always melts the vinyl along the edges and that is a problem for us because then we'd have to pull apart every layer of vinyl and it took so long. I never cut vinyl on the fold. There's a little nick out of my vinyl here but that is just the paper. It's not the vinyl, it's just the paper. But it wouldn't matter as long as my point makes it, we're, we're good. So we tried getting this vinyl with the tissue and it made this world of difference. Like we didn't have to peel the layers apart, but then we had a different problem. We had to peel the tissue off of every layer and it was so much waste that we just didn't do it. Plus it cost, I think, a dollar a yard more. That doesn't sound like a lot, but vinyl is very, very affordable. That was a 30%. 30 or maybe it was more like 25% higher. So things, things like that kind of make a big difference. But it was fun for the one time, one run we did. Hey Martina, how's it going? Okay, so now we have 
a cocoon with a clear front. We need a facing for this. What do we think about that? Do we think in the denim to match? Yeah, we'll just we'll just match it. What do I do with that? There it is. And then uh, I'm gonna iron that th that fabric together. Everyone's super quiet, Martina. This is their nap time. They just come here so I can lull them into a nice little coffee break or, you know. <laughs> I use a lot of streams for that. <laughs> so I'm just assuming. But <laughs> yeah, I could, Leslie. The, the, um, yeah, you could use a lighter weight fabric there. Give me one of these. As long as I had a big enough piece. But I think I could use this one or this one or this one. Would you like me to use a color? I think the light teal or this blue would look nice. Or I could use the gray as well. Yeah, nice, Martina. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna leave these pattern pieces out. You wanna pick, Leslie? I'm gonna start warming up my iron. <laughs> ah, that's a good point, let's do that. Do you want the gray denim or do you want something lightweight? <laughs> Malin, you got the pattern. That's awesome, Malin. Thank you. <laughs> the dissymmetry. Yeah, so to follow up on Saturday's stream, the teal, all right, Leslie gets to pick. Um, the follow up on Saturday's stream, I sewed the blazer incorrectly in the back. And Kashmirat saw my post and messaged me a lot of messages to make sure I understood how it went together. Basically, that back facing is bound. It, and I don't know why I didn't see that in the instructions. When I saw enclose the edge, I thought they were meaning sew it right sides together and turn it under and that'll enclose it. <laughs> and I thought that's such a weird way to say that. But you were supposed to bind that edge. And the seam allowances would have worked had I done it that way. So I ended up posting that not seeing all the messages from them, or maybe I hadn't got them yet. I sat there, I untook it, took it out, recut my back neck facing, and sewed it in the style of how I sewed the front, so it matches, and it looks beautiful, but it is not how it was intended. <laughs> so I'll go over it in detail on Saturday just to get people on the right track. I did put a comment under the video. I need to figure out how to pin that. I feel like I can only pin other people's comments right now. Maybe that's Instagram. All right, we're just gonna, I feel like I'm taking a slice of cake out of the middle. <laughs> no stream. Uh-oh. Really? I still see me live. Anyone have tips for Margie? Let's see, I'm gonna make sure this is the right length here. Okay. All right, so I got that on there. That'll look nice, don't you think, Leslie? Oh, okay, cool, it's bad, okay, cool. Um, wait, someone asked the question, Sarah. A, whole, a full video or list of tips for spoon flower. No, but I would love to make one. Yeah, I, w I would totally love to make one. I have a lot of tips about it. I would love to send them a love letter and say, could you please do this? <laughs> like, I have so many ideas 
of how that site could be better. Like, especially as someone who posts fabric on there, but as someone who buys fabric on there, and I have for years and years, since they started, I've been a customer. They, I, well, one main thing I wish they would do, there's two main things I wish they would do. One of them is, I wish when a designer had a fabric that came in like six colors, they were all on the same darn page. I don't wanna to have to go to that designer's thing and try and find, did they make this ever in teal? Did they ever make this smaller? You know what I mean? Like it's so frustrating. And then they could have also a place that says, this comes as a smaller version or a larger version and find those collections here. Like things like things like that are basic shopping things on most websites. I think that that would make the site more streamlined and few fewer because the site chugs, you know, like it's kind of a kind of a beast. And then um, the other thing is their fabric information isn't consistent. So if you're inside the shopping page of the um, like a fabric swatch, so say you're looking at this cute corgi fabric and you're selecting the fabrics, it's really nice. They ha now have this information button on each fabric that you can pick in the drop down, drop down menu. But that information isn't the same as the information in their all about their fabrics page. It is a little bit incorrect in some places. Not in such a bad way, but in a way that makes you kind of go, wait, I thought this was this. It's, it's like um, they, someone else wrote it. <laughs> anyway. Really, Elena? That's so weird. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Elena. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree, Elena, because originally they used to have this way to see the scale of fabric that was a little bit more um, easy to tell, the rulers and stuff. And I think they changed it partly because they probably had to add this whole new engine to their website in order to um, bring in all of the upholstery and home items. And I also think they changed it to prevent people from copying designers' prints. So they made it a little harder to see, but like, and, and this is the other thing is like, I can actually add photos below, but it's so hard to do. You have to have the photos on a third party site, like Flickr. <laughs> I don't even, I think I may have a Flickr account, but I do not upload, I don't want to upload photos to Flickr and then, then bring them over. I've done it for my knit print because the knit print's so confusing. Yeah, there's a lot of things I would love to just be like, I love you so much and I talk about you guys so much. Can you please do this? <laughs> they don't care about me. <laughs> They're very nice to me. And as a pro member, I actually have like a, you know, like a rep. We haven't, I haven't ever even contacted my rep there, but um, I used to have to contact my rep a lot when I would buy like 120 yards of one print and like one time it came with this tiny black line, like the, like small as a hair down the center. I'd never gotten fabric there with a flaw. And I was like, wow, I, I don't even know what to do with this. And then they, they reprinted and sent it to me. I don't know, but I don't even, I don't have my photos there either, Walter. I don't wanna do, I don't wanna do it twice. I shouldn't have to do it twice. I don't have to do it on Shopify. So anyway, so let's, um. Iron. Oh, I didn't set up my iron camera though. So let's see what it looks like and see if you guys can hear me. Oh, it's not too bad. Let's uh, zoom it in. Um, here we go. Forgot I was going to want to. There we go. The exposure looks pretty good. Let's bring up the sharpness a tiny bit. So you can see my weird hands. Yeah, the photos should be integrated. Regarding them, I'm working on. No, please, Martina, please. All right, so let's. All right, so we're going to use this. These. I don't need you or you or you or you. Just need those. Okay. 
me bring up my chat. Oops. Whoops. Oh my gosh. What's your question, Martina? I'm going to stand on this side here. So let's do, this is just regular Trico. This is the stuff I got from Waywack that I thought was going to be stretchy. It's not. The stretch is going this way, but I'm having no problems finding a use for it. I'm having a good old time using this stuff. <laughs> so it's still very useful, even though it's, it, I did, it, it's not going to work for what I wanted it for. I'm using it for waistbands. I used it on the belt for that red belt I made the other day. It's great for collars. Oops. Oh, no problem, Kathy. Yeah, I, I pretty much have cut three variations out. So, um, but yeah, you can rewind or rewatch and then at least you can even speed it up too if you want. You're making a baptismal romper out of flannel back satin. Oh yeah, it'll be a winter event for a newborn. Would it be better to line in a flannel or a lighter weight cotton? Ooh. Hi Nancy, how's it going? Uh, so I'm folding this handle and ironing it right now, and I'll go over this again in the sewing video how I did it, but since I'm at the iron, I might as well do it now. So I fold it in half, iron it in half, and now I'm gonna fold it to that fold line there again. And then this side as well, just like this. If you've been here at any, if you've seen me do this. And then I'm gonna fold it again. And then when we get to the machine tomorrow, we'll just stitch it down and then we'll have our handle. That feels nice and stiff too, I like it. Nice colorful little handle. All right, so now we have that. So, I don't know, to Martina, like, are you asking from the standpoint of what will be more comfy to the child? All right, so this stuff, you need to make sure that you know which side has the webbing. So you can't see it, but here, see, look at it. There it is, right? Keep it on the paper. And I'm actually gonna do this from, I, I really like doing things from the fabric side. I don't like running my iron on paper because it kind of makes sets my teeth on edge. <laughs> so I'm gonna put all sides and now I'm just gonna let it set and you really wanna get it to set on there. Yes, more comfy. I think either one sounds really cozy. It won't be on the baby for very long, right? Like we're not talking, like it's a one-time event. Flannel is nice and cozy though, you know? And it's a winter event. Yeah, I would do the flannel. Oh, wow, Elena. All right, so now you're gonna peel off this paper and you're gonna kind of test it and make sure that that webbing is stuck to the fabric. Mine's a little old. Yeah, let's do it a little bit longer. I'll do it on the paper side. This might be a non-steam thing to do too, but I, I use the steam because I find it works better for most fusibles. I would think they would tell you, Elena, at least. Oh, wow. I mean, Nicole, Nicole's ordering it. Yeah, Martina, I, I would go with your gut. What you think would work, be the coziest for that baby. All right, so now peel off this paper. Mine's, my, like I said, my Wonder Under is really old. It'll be a lot easier to use than mine. Usually it just comes right off the whole page. Yep, 
Yeah, look at that. I left a little glue behind in my haste. All right, and then now you're gonna put it on the fabric. Wrong sides together. Make sure none of it's gonna show to your iron. And then same thing. And basically you just made two-sided fabric that's finished. And so you can see why they would use this for applique, right? So they would iron this onto the little applique bits, you know, like an apple or something. And then they would iron that and it would make the iron or the apple essentially like a patch and then you could patch something. You could do, you can actually use this for patching as well. I think a lot of people are using other brands now and there's like, um, you can get hem tape that's double-sided fusible. If you've ever bought Ikea curtains, Ikea curtains come with this massive amount of it. I mean, they used to. <laughs> Oh, wow, Nicole. That's so exciting. You were going to get the new one, too. Is there something cool about the new one? That'll be nice, Martina. What a nice uh, little thing to make. I'm trying to balance too much right here while I'm looking at chat. <laughs> I want to get my fabric mostly on this mat. It'll almost fit. This is kind of a weird shaped piece, but like I said, it, it's okay if it's going to stick to my my wool mat. Like this, this every nothing really sticks to the wool mat. I don't know why, but the wool mat's kind of nice that way. Let's get this kind of everywhere first. I'm gonna turn off the steam this time. I think it's a 15 seconds in each spot. This is Wonder Under. So it's a, it's like a, uh, it's basically like a sheet of glue <laughs> and it's stuck to this piece of paper. And so what I do is I fuse it to one side of the fabric and then I peel off the paper and then I can lay another piece of fabric to the glue and iron it. And then that way, like this is two pieces of fabric that have been glued together and it is really nice and, you know, stiff. So this is our attempt at making a cocoon using any fabric you have laying around. As long as you have the Wonder Under, that might be a little bit weird, but some folks probably have it from their stash from a long, long time ago. I think there's other brands now too. And it's great because like I said, it doesn't give you that cellulite effect that uh, fusible. So if you want, you don't have to use a double-sided fusible. You could just use fusible interfacing. You don't have to use this. I just thought it would be kind of a fun way to do it. So if you wanted to use a fusible interfacing, you could do that to one side and then you could just cut another piece of fabric, you know, like let's just say this is a piece of um, fusible interfacing. And then, you know, you could just lay a lining to cover it up so it looks nice on the inside of your thing and then treat this as one layer, maybe even tack it around the perimeter. So that'd be another way to do it. And most likely you have fusible Pellon in your stash if you don't have this weird stuff. I don't want um, glue on my iron. Overall updates and a 30 minute sew timer so it isn't cold by the next time. Oh, that is pretty cool. So are they not giving any information or have they said anything like due to shipping delays? Yeah, you guys, I think we need to be prepared that if you um, are someone who has some Christmas shopping, like if you're someone who celebrates Christmas and you buy gifts, especially for kids, 
You should start now. It's going to be really hard this year. Or we are all going to start making gifts and we're going to start now so it's not stressful. <laughs> okay. Right, let's see. I think I can get this big piece of paper off easily. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Let's see. Yeah, that's not quite done. It's done here. That's not, that was pretty easy. This was really nice. I didn't do a very good job here. You know, you can always do this. Put this piece of paper back on here. Just don't touch it with your iron. You know. There, see, look, now it doesn't look all rough. Do you really need an iron right now, too? Oh, yeah, steam a seam. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the stuff. Uh oh, what, Martina? Yeah, exactly, Carrie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true, Martina. Well, you know, they don't all have to each individual get things, right? Yeah, but uh, if you haven't been uh, hearing about that, I, I, I totally recommend it. Like, I, I even know from my husband's business where he works, it's a big, it's a big deal. The other thing to think about, too, this is, it's going to be kind of a bummer because, um... I think for smaller companies, they're not going to get their shipments until well after the holidays, and then they won't have any buyers. Like, there's things like that to think about, too. Yeah, people can't get supplies. They can't get stuff. And the shipping has gone up 30%. I'm not sure if the shipping has gone up 30%, like at my husband's business. I can't remember if it's the shipping has gone up 30% or the sh costs of the shipping has made their product cost more, 30% more. It's intense. Just so all of you out there who love doing this kind of thing, it is just as satisfying as you think it is. <laughs> but it's got kind of a staticky little bit of a cling to it. This is doing pretty good for how old it is. There we go. All right. <laughs> You're so glad you're hoarding fabric and yarn. <laughs> Are you going to start a shop? <laughs> you might be able to bail out a few folks, Walter. <laughs> Good time to start selling the stash, you guys. <laughs> Yep, exactly, Danny. Yep. Yeah, it's really hard to get things. Yeah, I think that they should have emailed you too. Have you reached out yet? I mean, you shouldn't have to, but you know, just curious. All right, so I like to kind of get this stuck everywhere a little tiny bit, and then that way I don't get a bubble, you know? All right, so now I can go back and kind of fuse this. Risk of stale cookies. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting, Nancy. Nothing I've got lately, it has been delayed. Oh, really, Elena? Okay. That's <laughs> only sad. You just finally got it organized. <laughs> I hear you on that one.
we should start thinking about our uh, mm, gift sewing week in December. <clears throat> the other thing I was thinking about sewing, you guys, um, is I want to make myself an ideal bag. Remember that design, that bag you guys all designed? That's a free pattern on my website. I can't believe how many people have downloaded. I didn't even realize it. I looked at it. I was like, oh, wow, okay. I'm really glad people are downloading it. I don't know if anyone's making it. <laughs> it's quite an ambitious bag project. But I think I'd like to make one. I want to make it out of wax cotton, the screen. And then um, I also want to change the top, make a variation where it has a zip top like my laundry basket. And it has shoulder straps, um, like two shoulder straps, you know, rather than a flap. I'm not a big flan fan of flap bags. They're really fussy to me. But I really want that bag. I don't know. Are you guys at all interested in watching something like that? Because if not, I'm just going to make it because <laughs> I want it. I'm, I, the, I'm outgrowing my pocket bucket for schlepping. I want it to fit my iPad and keep my iPad pencil really safe because I'm so scared to lose that thing. All right. Here we go. This looks good. Do I have a little wrinkle there? Oh, no. That's like a slub in the yarn. See, how do I feel about how stiff this is going to be? I mean, it's okay. It's definitely not like the wax cotton, right? I think if you did this to something else, it would be stiffer. Like did, did this to a different fabric. But Okay. I'm going to go back to this camera. It feels so weird to talk to you without no face cam sometimes, you know. Oh, I made myself kind of a mess here. Let's get rid of all this. <clears throat> okay, so here we have this bag. And what did I do with the pocket? There it is. And then isn't there? Oh, yeah, here it is. And then this will be the little trim on the inside. I want this one, but I'm going to sell all these on the website afterward because I don't need a cocoon. <laughs> and then we have the wax cotton one. So let's mark our webbing handle on this one right now. I'm doing the turquoise, yeah. <laughs> yep, surprise gift iron. Yeah, I agree. USPS is not as prompt right now. Oh, wow, Walter. You uh, could probably go through whoever you used your, for your payment source. I did that with a, a tripod mount that I bought on one of those Instagram ads. I had bought things on Instagram ads before albeit from companies I'd heard of, and this one looked legit. And it was a tripod mount so I could um, have overhead camera. It's not easy to find a tripod that can look straight down without you seeing the legs of the tripod. And so I was like, oh, this is great. I'm going to get this. Ordered it, and then, oh, the shipping delay, blah, blah, blah. And then I was getting kind of like, when is this actually coming? And I couldn't find out any information. And then um, I went through PayPal and I just said, you know, I think that this was a scam because I paid, paid through PayPal, PayPal. And then I saw so and then because the company wouldn't reply to me. And then um, um, you can open a dispute with PayPal and PayPal's on it. And they said, yeah, 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 fine. We'll refund the money. And so PayPal's like, OK, great. That's resolved. And I was like, OK. And they didn't do it. That was their kind of ploy. And so then I called PayPal for another reason. Who I, You know, you never call PayPal. But I called and they, I actually got someone extremely helpful on the phone and, the, and calling was actually really easy. And I just said, um, I think I had to change my address on a card and it, it wouldn't let me do it online or something. And I said, also, I have this weird thing where I can't open a dispute because I've already opened a dispute with these people. And they say they would refund it and they didn't. And she looked at my account, she goes, huh, you're right. And I said, yeah, I think it's a scam. 
because I don't think anybody's getting this tripod. That's all it is and blah, blah, blah. And she says, yeah, there's actually a few, you know, things. And so I, I got my money back. <laughs> it was crazy. So, and then I reported their ad every time I saw it to um, Facebook and Instagram. And then they took it down. <laughs> it was great. Okay, let's see here. You ordered a car in July and it hasn't arrived? Oh my gosh. Are you guys interested in the bag? Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm sorry I don't have one sewn here. I actually sold those samples. Her claim guy and denied, Carrie? That's ridiculous. Yeah, right, Nancy? Nancy, oh, okay, so they're starting to become this little momentum with a few of us about projectors. Ah, I have really tall ceilings in here, but I'm renting, and but they, they have a lot of, um, so we're all talking about projectors because of the cost of printing patterns. Did you see that company I sent, Nancy, in that thread on printing patterns on Instagram? I saw them on Instagram. Um, and then, um, this is the other thing I was thinking, you guys, I'm curious. What success, Nicole? Did you find information? Oh, Kathy has a projector. Okay. So one of the things, wait, I want to see what your success was. Would you say good idea? Oh yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so one of the things I was thinking, Nancy, is can you open your pattern file? I need to try this, you guys. Can't you open your pattern file, click off all the layers that you don't want, print it as a PDF, like save as a PDF, and then submit that as the one you want printed? Oh, wow. That's a bummer, Carrie. Sheesh. Getting it set up was a journey. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. So um, Adina shared in the Facebook sewing group that we have, the So-So so -so Live Sewists Facebook group. Someone put the <laughs> thing in chat. I think um, um, there is um, a thread because Nancy was really frustrated. She can't find someone to print her patterns out with layers and it not cost an arm and a leg. She ended up just reordering a pattern. Like I think like, that's kind of where we're at. Printing patterns adds so much cost to a print, to, to a pattern. Yeah, and, and only some patterns have layers. Yeah, exactly. But um, if they do, not all printers will print layers, right? Right, Nicole? I'm gonna try it right now. Let's see. What, um, let's see. I know Itch to Stitch does. I think Itch to Stitch also does projector files now. Okay, uh, Mountain View pull on jeans. Here we go. Um, large format. Layers. Here, I'll share my screen. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, that you can. Me and computer. Okay, can you hear me? Okay. All right, so I've opened up this file here. This is the Itch to Stitch Mountain View pull ons. And see, over here, there's this little button, see, here's my mouse over here on the left, and you see this little stack of pages? That's a stack of layers. If you click that, some companies will let you select the size you want. So let's say I only want the size four. I can unclick all these other sizes. Now some companies also will have things like the grain line and the text as a layer. Do not unclick those. She has, hers is a little more sophisticated. All right, so now if I print this, so when you save a PDF, usually you have to say print as a PDF. I don't know what create PDF is right there. I've never tried that. So, um, and if you don't have a PDF writer, oh yeah, look at that, I can't. Oh yeah, fit, fit to page. But it says eight and a half by 11, scale 23%. You guys are talking, let me see. Are you guys giving me tips? 
choose paper source by PDF size, actual size, document 33. I want, oh, 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 I need to select print to PDF. Actual size. Can I still not? 100% fit. Yeah, so I'm not sure. There may be a way to do this. And then I could save it as a PDF. So you say print, and then what happens is you get a, a place to, to put it, right? So then you put it in the file place you want, your desktop or wherever, okay? Okay, so let's see. Let me read your guys' chat here. Hi, Barbara, how's it going? Is AO forming, formatting as an option? Okay, Mafio, so she knows. Okay, you always come in clutch with these little details. I love it. That's what I was thinking too. I think you do have to have per the uh, permission. Oh, okay, okay, Nancy. Okay, so you guys have tried this. Hmm. Hey, Zach, you can change paper size into properties. Let's try that. I thought I'd tried that just now. How's it going, Zach? I haven't seen you in a bit. When you print the file, you print it as a PDF. That will save it as a PDF. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to try this create PDF. Okay, no, that's not going to do what I thought. You can change a layer default to not show up, but also need the full suite and an unlock. Okay, yeah, I don't have a paid version of Adobe. I imagine a paid version of Adobe would save some money in the long run of frustration in printed pages and layers. I don't know. I guess you just got to pick your poison, right? All right, so... Size. You've been lurking hardcore, nice. That's good, I'm glad to hear it. Okay. Can I change? Oh. Hmm. To the right of the printer selection drop down. Properties. Okay, that's what I was just trying. So, and then the advanced. Yeah, right, Elena? I would wonder too. It's worth a try, I guess. I don't see copy, like AO though. Yeah, you can definitely print the, oh, and then you print the tiled version. You can definitely do this on your home printer. So I should say like, you could do, this. so I'm trying to make this save only the layer I want and then still send it to a copy shop. Cause like, I like using pdfplotting.com but they won't do layers. I don't know what it would take to get them to do layers. My local printer will. Yeah, okay, Zach. Well, I can't, Kathy, because it's, see, do you see right here? It's there, but it says eight and a half by 11 inches. Because I fit to the page. And you don't want fit because you want actual size. <laughs> Otherwise, this right here will distort the um, sizing. Choose paper source. Oh, that's right, Nancy. I remember when you did that. Well, maybe. Hmm. Well, I thought this might be a, a something. I kind of figured that it wouldn't work. Okay, Elena. All right, wait, I want to make sure that I don't 
change some of my default things. <laughs> did I already have this? I did, right? Yeah, right, Kathy? <laughs> I know. I know. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm down for the... Uh, I like rabbit holes, but at the same time, I... I don't feel like I should have to get a projector to print someone's pattern out. <laughs> and, and I think that this push to make all patterns PDF versions, I understand it, but I think also that um, it adds too much cost for folks. Perfect, Zach. Okay, there we go. So let's let's look up how much it costs to get Adobe PDF. Maybe that's that that would be the next thing. Oh, okay. Oh, so they. Oh God, Nancy, got it. Oh, that's cool. All right. Yeah, and, and the thing is, there's other PDF writers, like I used to use cute PDF, like just like the, it sounds like, oh, she's cute, she's cute, <laughs> you know, like that. There's a cute PDF writer. I haven't used it in years because now finally Microsoft has one built in, um, but I used to always have to download this free one. There may be other PDF writers out there that would allow you to do that. Yeah. But you can't do a free trial over and over because you know, you, you run out of ways to do that. Yeah, exactly. A monthly subscription. I just, you would think, yeah, that's the reason I don't um, do that is because it's a monthly thing. You can't figure out zip files, Terry? Here, let me show you. All right, so let me go. I'll show you a zip file. I know they're a little bit confusing. Where's my me and computer? Here we go. All right, so here is my, we'll, we'll, we'll try and make the screen a little less chaotic here. Okay, I'm gonna try and hide my stream set so it's not so confusing. All right, so this is how I organize my patterns. Um, I put them into different categories here, right? So this right here, this is, these are zipped. So this is my pen cushion pattern right here. And it's zipped because it has, it has like, I think three things in it or two things in it. So when you open it up, you can actually see the contents of the zipped file. Hopefully this won't take long. Maybe it will, cause I'm streaming. I don't know if it's gonna want to download something. Let me see if I can open something else that I'm, let's see, like the Auburn. Um, it doesn't say it's downloaded. There we go. Okay. So here I clicked on that zip file, right? And so now inside the zip file, you see right here, it says extract all. So I'm not on a Mac. I'm going to ignore that one, but this one right here, I can open it and I can see what's in there, but I haven't unzipped it. So I can't really use this yet. You can still open these files. I can double click on that and we can look at it in Adobe, right? So now you want these files to be on your computer. You can say extract all. And so now you need to pick a place just like where you have this saved. It's the same idea. You just want to save these files somewhere and you can just pick where they selected and it's probably the exact spot I'm at, but we can just pick a spot, right? So I can go, okay, I really like having these um, in my sewing and then I'll just put it right here. This is my sewing and so I have a folder here that says things I haven't made yet and then all these are all the things that I've made, right? All my PDF patterns. So I'll just stick it in here since I am making it. I already have it here, see right there? So it's gonna make another one. So that's in my patterns that I've bought in my sewing folder and I say extract and then it puts it there. So now you can see here's patterns bought and this is that folder that I just showed you. So here's the I haven't made yet. And look, there it is right there. It, it did both. And so now you have the file on your, your computer. So that's all you do is you just say extract all, and then you select where you want it to go. 
Um, why do I keep getting lost there? <laughs> there you go. Let's see. 15 bucks a month. Ugh. That's kind of a lot because I would add up every month for all the printed patterns you wanted to print with layers. Like how many patterns do you have that have layers? How often are you printing? How much time are you really saving? 40 edge projects didn't print to PDF to a large format architect. Yeah, that's the other thing, Nancy. I would find a local printer to you, an architect printer. Oh, interesting, Malin. Is that in one of their, um, no, Terry, what? That's not what you needed? Oh, you had to get the unzip program. Oh, okay. You can buy the program for 200-ish. Yeah. Oh, that's true, Elena. You could. If we got rid of our monthly subs, we would have like five bills total to be done for that. What do you mean? <laughs> right, Nancy? <laughs> I want, uh, me too. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like the one-time cost thing. I like the one-time cost thing. I'm sad they're getting away from it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So my, um, I have Photoshop Elements, and that I bought, and I don't have to pay for ever again. It's really awesome. But I don't get updates probably either. But, um, yeah, for my Photoshop and Illustrator, you have to pay monthly. It's like $240 a year. It's crazy. If, you, if that's your primary thing, that's great. You uninstalled the zip file. <laughs> there you go. That, if you just need to download that program, that'll help you. <laughs> it's really easy. Yeah, right, Carrie? I know. I feel like we all kind of shot ourselves in the foot over that one, especially in regards to TV. Like, you know how for decades we've all been like, if I could just pick the channels that I want, <laughs> this would be so great, you know, or at least let me like edit out all these channels in my cable box, right? I, I don't have, well, I think we do have cable. We have cable. We have dish. That's what it is. I just don't use it. <laughs> it's downstairs. I don't use it. I don't really care about it. But um, now we have a billion like places to get content for TV shows and stuff and you have to pay a monthly sub for all of them, you know? It's, we kind of, yeah. You want Audible to be a lump sum? Well, it wasn't always owned by Amazon. <laughs> um, you can pay for it in a yearly thing, Carrie. But you could also, but you do, you do know that you always have access to your Audible files, even if you're not a member. I, so I was talking to someone recently and they didn't know that because I've been an Audible subscriber for 15 years. And um, just this past year, I ended my subscription because I couldn't keep up. I wanted to catch up and then do it because now you lose your credits. You can lose your credits, but you don't lose your already purchased credits. Yeah. Yeah, my husband likes dish for sports, soccer. Yeah, right, Carrie? I know. I just love it, too. I know we're totally sidetracked now, but we do love talking about all this other stuff, don't we? Yeah, exactly, Mafio. Exactly. I was thinking that, too. I have a Roku, and I love it. But, you know, to be able to use the Roku, I have to have, you know, pay for all the little things. There's a lot of free stuff on Roku as well. Roku, I love Roku. One, you buy the Roku thing and that's it. Like, there's no subscription fee. I love that. I don't know, Gary. I mean, the credits, exactly. I have a feeling the credits are because it's a um, something, a contractual thing with authors and things. Yeah, the, you can do the library for audiobooks. They just take up a lot of space. Manchester United, is that your, is that your team? <laughs> he was just watching a, a Man U game the other day. 
Okay. Um, is there anything else sewing related you guys want to talk about? <laughs> I feel like people are like, oh my gosh, this is devolved. They aren't legally. Yeah, exactly. The library. Yeah. You know what I also love about Audible is you can give books away for free. As many as you like. I love it. And I have. As long as they don't already have an account. <laughs> Um, all right, so tomorrow I'm going to sew these three versions of the cocoon. So this is the one that we interfaced with a double-sided fusible web. And I'm gonna, I did a homemade handle, so this will be a really interesting version. This is the dogwood denim. The, one, the interesting thing about this is it's going to have a clear inset, so a clear front on it. <laughs> and then this one is waxed canvas quite stiff. I am not a pro at sewing with this stuff, so we'll see how it is. Well, there's a little like blemish in my canvas right there. Look at that. You see it? Weird. It's not even a cut because there's no slice anywhere else. And this one has the webbing handle and I'm going to do a bias facing on the inset rather than it being lined with fabric. So it's interesting, like none of these have a lined inset. So these are all gonna be sewn a bit differently than the original in the instructions. So yes, Barbara, lots of options. <laughs> Nancy, really, gosh. No, don't, you didn't give us off on a tangent. We were talking about the PDF printing. I think that was really good because now we're all kind of considering projectors and once I, so there's a, Adina mentioned this projector sewing group on Facebook. Now I'm not the first to jump into any group on Facebook, trust me. And when there was the outage the other day, I was kind of hoping it would be gone forever. I say, sorry, but it's true. And I decided I'm just gonna join the group and see what's in there. 47,000 members, by the way. So that gave me heart palpitations just thinking about, but that group is so well organized and they have such great information and they have all these pinned um, like topics where you can go and they're like, you must read that before you just start posting questions in here. You know, these, this is a free group. So you need to do your research and read these documents and things like this, this crowdsource information. And it's so good and it's on so many different projectors. And I will tell you after look, I watched like three videos and read two documents in there. That group made me feel like anybody could have a projector in any situation. Like if you're temporary living somewhere, if you have a very short distance between your ceiling and your table, some people do it on the floor because there's not enough distance. There's um, temporary setups and lots of different types of projectors. So if you're kind of interesting, interested in that, I would check it out. Seems very like a low threshold of financial investment, but it might be a little bit of calibration time. But then once you have it right, it seems like it's just great. Yes, they have a FAQ, exactly. Do I have a sewing 101 video? I don't, I should do that. I know, Terry, I'm thinking about it. See you guys, see you Walter, <laughs> see you guys next time. See you Walter, thanks for coming. Thanks Carrie. Ah, yes, take time to breathe. Cool, Nancy. Yeah, you're still a little confused. Adina says she, you can look up her name in there and see her setups. Yeah, okay, Kathy. Thank you for saying that, Kathy. Yeah, because I was like, oh, my table's too small. And then the video I watched, oh my gosh, she's doing it on a little tiny cutting mat. I'm like, okay, that's not, that's too small for me. I would want to be able to lay it out, you know? And I'm wondering if it would be, you'd be able to see it on a stream. Yeah, okay, okay, Kathy. <laughs> okay, cool, Rebecca. So do you guys watch these cutting streams and you're just like, oh my gosh, you guys are in the dark ages. <laughs> Do you guys think I'm in the dark ages using <laughs> like rotary knife is so sophisticated for some people and you guys are like I use a projector. <laughs> yeah, right Nancy, exactly. I think it's a similar thing. It sits above six inches above your table. Wow, Rebecca. Very cool. 
cool. See, I'm looking at this going, I already have cameras. I'm like, oh, I don't want to deal with anymore. You know? But it, I, maybe I could take some time to actually make my camera thing better. I don't know. I just want to sew. Okay. Oh, so UST is the name of one. Interesting. That's so cool. All right, well, I'm gonna look forward to seeing some of those pictures. Oh, is Inkscape like a editing tool? Oh, okay, Nancy. You wanna trace patterns with it. Oh, okay, it's just ultra short throw then, okay. Okay. Interesting, you guys. This is so interesting. And the their projectors are are they like in the hundred dollar range? Is that is that about right? I know you can get a really expensive one, probably. Yeah, right, Malin. I know. I know people do that, and um, I'm probably not going to do that either. I used to use CAD, <laughs> so it's kind of funny that I'm 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 not even interested in that. I just I'm just so fast on the table. I, I think that's why it's like the thing you learn. So I think it's however you learn or whatever appeals to you, whatever, you know, I think there's just all kinds of ways to do it. Yeah, we should, Nancy. We really should. People are going to see this stream to cut out three cocoons. They're going to be like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to get that pattern. It took her like three hours. <laughs> okay, Nicole. Yeah, that's so affordable. Okay, okay. All right, I'm kind of intrigued. I just don't want to spend more time on one more thing to learn, you know? But if I could get rid of this whole shelf back here of patterns, I'm down for that. But then, then I would have to digitize some of them in, you know, like trace them and put them in there. Yeah, because not all these are PDF, but a lot of them are. And I think I'm gonna get rid of some, so. All right, I'm gonna go. All right, I'll see you tomorrow to cut. Um, I was thinking about having a stream today just to, while I sew something together, but we've been live for a bit, so I'm gonna go and eat. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, and I'm gonna sew all three of these. Um, it's a very fast project to sew. I am sewing these a little differently, but this is something you could you can totally sew. I, I, got, the, I got it down to like 12 minutes each. <laughs> I know you don't wanna know that, but I did. It's really quick to sew. Who sold them in the Facebook group? Oh, wow, Rebecca. Yeah, the plotters are can be really expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Well, that's a good discussion. I'm interested. I'm definitely intrigued. All right. Well, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Same time, same place. And now you want a projector. <laughs> How about I just leave you with, like, wanting peanut M&Ms instead? <laughs> I should speech so I wanted to show you. I'll, I'll think about it. I don't really need to do that. <laughs> All right, you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow.